I'm going to show you some cool stuff about JavaScript, and this is going to help you do your JavaScript. And what you're going to learn in this video is how to use a tool which is going to help you write JavaScript code more easily. So again, we're going to be working in Code Academy to do our JavaScript. And uh, just like we did HTML and CSS in Code Academy, you can see I am in Code Academy. And uh, we did the HTML and CSS deal right here. We are now going to do the JavaScript deal. And so when you go into JavaScript, uh, you will have these same things that you're going to work through, just like you did with HTML and CSS. However, now I'm going to show you a tool that's going to be very helpful uh, to you in writing JavaScript. And this tool is known as an integrated development environment. And so an integrated ah, drives electronics. That's not it. Integrated development environment defined. Uh, or interactive development environment is a software application that provides comprehensive facilities to computer programmers for software development. And IDE normally consists of a source code editor, build automation tools, and a debugger. That might all sound a little bit foreign if you've never done any computer stuff before. But uh, basically what it is is, you know, kind of like uh, a word processor, just like a word processor helps you create documents, you know, that you're going to print. So you could create a paper for one of your classes in Microsoft Word. And using Microsoft Word, which is a word processor, will really help you write that paper for your class. So Microsoft Word, in some ways, could actually be seen as an environment to help you create papers or to write documents. Likewise, when we're going to write computer code, we have a piece of software. Uh, which will help us write that computer code. So just like Microsoft Word helps you write a paper, we have software known as IDEs, Integrated Development Environments, that help us write computer code. I hope that makes sense. That's a pretty dang good analogy, actually, if I do say so myself. Um, so the, the IDE we're going to be using is, uh, is uh, created by a company called JetBrains. And, you know, if for no other reason, you should go with this IDE, just because anybody who names their company JetBrains uh, you got to give them at least a look. <laughs> so we're using JetBrains IDE, and there, there's a reason we're using JetBrains IDE. If you look for like JavaScript IDE, right, you'll find a whole bunch of different JavaScript editors or IDEs that, that are out there. But we're going with JetBrains for a couple of reasons. One, JetBrains makes awesome integrated development environments, uh, and they not only make them for JavaScript, they also, you know, WebStorm, as its name connotes, is also going to be able to create um, a development. WebStorm, as its name connotes, is also going to be able to, um, you know, do HTML and CSS. And so uh, it'll help you writing HTML, it'll help you writing CSS, it'll help you writing JavaScript. Likewise, if you get into Java programming or Android programming, you will use JetBrains IDE called IntelliJ IDE or Android Studio, which is built upon IntelliJ IDE. And because you've used WebStorm, there'll be a lot of sort of uh, functionality in WebStorm, which you'll already know as you go into IntelliJ and uh, Android Studio. So those are some of the reasons for picking the IDE. And another reason is, is uh, Fresno City College has a partnership with, um, with JetBrains, and we have a license which gives us free access to it. So I'm going to show you how to use. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use WebStorm to write your JavaScript code, and I'm going to show you where the license is. Actually, I'll show you where the license is first. So here in Assignments in Blackboard, Blackboard Assignments, Week 12, you're watching this video. And then right here, you have a link for the license for WebStorm. So if you click that, it'll open it up. And then when you uh, are asked for the license after installing, it says license begin, license end. The license is all of this, including that little double quote. So just copy all of that. And you're going to paste that in where it asks for the license. And then the username is Fresno City College. So copy that and paste that in where it asks for the username. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download and install WebStorm. So JetBrains, WebStorm. Get WebStorm. Download, install it. And uh, once it's installed, uh, you're going to run it, and it'll ask you for the license. 
When you run it, you'll notice here that this is kind of a dark look. That's a light look. You can watch a little video here to tell you a little bit about it. If you like the dark look, once it started, you could go into File. You could go to Settings. And you could go to uh, Appearance, I believe, right here. And uh, er, that's not it. Let's try Editor, Appearance. That's not it. Let's try Colors and Fonts. And there we have. So IDE Settings, Editor, Colors and Fonts. I'm going with Darkula. You could try different ones. But if you say Darkula, you got to say it like your Count Dracula, Darkula. And there might be some other place in here where you set uh, the appearance of it. But let's just try it there. Code style, see if there's anything. No, that's not going to be it. All right, so I'm going to hit Apply and see if um, Darkula has been set for editors. Would you like to set Darkula's default look and feel? Yes. A restart. Darkula. I now have Darkula. I kind of like it. So uh, first thing I'm going to recommend you do is when you come in here, it'll ask you the first time you start it, it'll ask you, uh, let me just close this project. It'll say, hey, do you want to create a new project? And you'll say, yeah, create a new project. And it'll be, what will it be this project? Uh, you might call yours code academy JavaScript. That'd be a really good name, right? Because this is your JavaScript work. Likewise, if you're doing going back through HTML and CSS, you might call it HTML. And if you create another one and call it HTML. And if you're doing the PHP, you might create another one and call it PHP. That way you kind of have all of your files in one place. So uh, I'm just creating a temp here because I already have one called that. And now I've created this sort of directory structure. And that directory structure on my computer, if I paid attention, right, when I created that, so let me just do that again. Create a new project. I could have said, where do I want that to be? And it's in users, TM, documents. So it's in my documents. So if I open this one back up, Right, I can even see that here, the path. It's in my documents. And if I go look on Windows Explorer, I see here in my documents, I have Code Academy JavaScript temp. Um, so now that I have that, I could start creating files in that area. So I could right click here and I could choose new and I could say, hey, I want to create a JavaScript file. Or I could just create a blank file or an HTML file. If at first I want you to create a blank file. And I'm going to call this file uh, Code Academy, just C A all code. Code Academy JavaScript all code dot txt. I'm adding the txt extension because this is a text file. I don't want it to be a JavaScript file or anything like that. I'm just going to put text in here and be able to reference it later. And so there it is. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a dashed line here. And then I'm going to copy that dashed line and have three spaces between it and the next dashed line, and then like that. And now I'm going to just lay that out a bunch of times. Let me just make sure I got the right spaces. I don't. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. And I need to uh, darkula. Let me see how am I doing it. I need it like this. Let's see if that works. Let's see what that looks like. So now when I click in here, I'll be able to have a space above, a space below, and a line in which I'm typing. That's, that was my goal. And so I'm just going to do that. I'm, I control C, and now I'm control V, right? Control V for paste. V is in victory. And I just created a whole bunch of lines like that. Now the reason you have this file is because I'm going to use Alt-Tab on my keyboard and go back to Code Academy. When I start Code Academy, there it is. Right? My very first thing, starting Code Academy, what is your name? Todd. Well, I don't really need that piece of code. Right? But here I've got my first piece of JavaScript code. I'm going to control A select to, to select all of it. Control A, Control C, Alt Tab, and then click in here and Control V. And there's my first chunk of code that I want to sort of remember from JavaScript. And then I'll go, okay, I got that one. And then, you know, I don't need that one. I don't need those. You know, that's all just sort of math. And uh, there's the length again. I already got that. Confirm. That's new. Control A, Control C, Alt Tab. Click here, Control V. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating one file with all of my JavaScript code. So when you've done this, I'm going to close this project and then open up my real project. When you've done this, you'll have 
one text file, which is here's mine, codeacademy.txt, and it's already open. One text file, and you can see I'm on line 2293 because I'm most of the way through the JavaScript training a second time creating this file, so you'll actually be able to download it and look at it. But I have all the code from everything I've done through Code Academy. Why is this useful? Because there'll be times you'll be like, ah, how do I do that? How do I do that? I remember doing that. I don't remember where. Or somewhere in Code Academy. Well, now you could come into this one file, right, with all the code from everything you did in Code Academy. Press Control F, Control F on your keyboard to find. Make sure you click on the file, Control F. And now I'm going to search for maybe function, right? And here's the first occurrence of function. So, okay, right about there, I started to do functions. I can see, okay, you do var greeting equals function. Nay, okay, and then I could like use that as a reference. Super important. That's so going to help you as you do this. So that's the first thing you need to do is create this file, okay? That's the first thing you need to do. And then when JavaScript starts to get a little bit more complex, so what you could do is when you need to create something, you can come here, and if there's code here, you could copy it, control C, and you can come over to uh, WebStorm, and then you could right click right there, and you could choose new JavaScript file. And you could actually write your code in here, and this is going to help you write your code because it'll give you a suggestion. So I create this new JavaScript file, and I could give it a name, and so I could call this one uh, functions recap functions recap and then it creates a JavaScript file for me with the JS extension and I could paste that code in here and then once I'm in here I could right click and I could choose run the function recap run this file and it runs the code right here and it shows here's your output hi I'm Todd right but when I am running this code so I'm going to comment out all this code by highlighting it holding control on my keyboard and then pressing forward slash and it comments out all of that code and now if I was going to write that code as if I'd never written it before right I create a new variable and I set it equal to a function and I'm gonna pass in the parameter name and uh, and then I have my opening and closing brackets where I'm gonna put in my function I'm gonna return this statement and so basically what this function is doing is uh, I have a function called name string, and you pass a name into it, and then it'll say it'll return the string hi I am and with whatever name got passed in, and then it's going to print whatever name you pass into it. And you can see here when I wrote that function, so I'm just going to comment all that out again for a second and show you. When I write that function, right? I just type F U <laughs> and and it brings up code suggestions. Do you want function? And I could just hit tab on my keyboard right there. And then I open the parentheses and I don't have to close the parentheses. I just opened it and it automatically adds the closing parentheses and I type name. And I do an opening bracket and it automatically gives me a closing bracket. And I can press enter and I can type in whatever I want to type. Oh, I type RE and there's return. And then I hit tab to accept return. Right, and so it really helps with that's called code completion. And now my son's crying. My wife's with him. My wife is with him. You can also see it gives me suggestions here, right? Like there's a funny little darkness right there. And if I look over here, it's got a little yellow flag, and it says undetermined statement, right? And if I click more there, it'll say the inspection reports JavaScript statements which are not terminated by a semicolon. Right, so it says it wants a semicolon there. So I put a little semicolon there, and now that one little warning goes goes away. I have another warning here, and it says unused local variable name string. So I haven't used this variable name string yet, and you can see it's got a wiggly underline. So it's saying, well, you created a variable, but you haven't used it. Well, let's use it. So I could create another variable and uh, return string and I could say that that is going to be equal to name string and it automatically brings up this variable I declared so I just hit tab and I'm going to pass into it my name. Alright so I called that function and I passed in the argument Todd and so this function is going to run, name string is going to run and Todd got passed into it so it's going to return hi I am Todd and it's going to assign it to return string. And so now I could console, and here's, again, it gives me suggestions, right? And I just hit tab, and I could just console log, and there's the suggestion again. I just hit tab, and then I finish it with a semicolon. I could console log the return string. 
Now I did it this way, which is different than what I did right here in that assignment, because I just sort of broke up this one statement right here, which had the console log name string Todd in it. But you see here that returned string is equal to name string, uh, that function with Todd passed in. So since this is here and this is here, I could actually consolidate those two lines. I could consolidate those two lines and I can make them like this, right? So if return string is equal to that, I could just take what was that and put it there. And, uh, and then instead of having these two lines right here, I could just have that one line right there. And so I could write all this code. It'll do the code completion for me. It'll give me suggestions about you need a semicolon here. I could test it, right click, choose run. Hi, I'm Todd, that's my output. And I could copy all this, control C, alt tab, come back into Code Academy and control V, and then I could submit it, and great, it ran. So that's just, you know, uh, a way that's going to help you write your JavaScript, and it's also going to help you get you familiar with the integrated development environment, which is like, you know, just basically a word processor for writing code, and it totally helps you out with suggestions and with code completion and with telling you if you need a semicolon or, you know, if you need to, you've created a variable you haven't used, and, uh, and then also you're going to have this master file with all the code that you've created. So I'd then maybe take this code here that I created, control C, come over here and paste it in for that exercise. So I've got all the code in one, one document. So it's just super, 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 super helpful. And uh, you want to make sure you download and install WebStorm. The one last thing I'll show you about WebStorm is under code, you've got reformat code. And you could just say reformat. It says, what do you want to re reformat? Which is basically like you choose everything or what, and you can play with these different options. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to reformat this one file. And so if, if my code is all funny, right, now I run code uh, reformat, and let's see if it indents that line, and see it indent in that line. And that's really helpful if, you know, like with the HTML and the CSS where you have all the cascading in and cascading out and all those indents. That will be really helpful with writing HTML and CSS. That is an integrated development environment, super helpful, useful tool. Make sure you download WebStorm and install it. Go get the license key from right here. And then you can download uh, a copy of all of my code. So if you click this link right here, it'll take you to uh, this page. And then you could click, hey, download this. And you'll have a text file of all my code. So if you're totally stuck, here's a solution, right? You can come in here and you can look for how did Todd do it. And uh, you can copy that code out and... Um, you know, look at it and understand it and then type it in yourself so that it starts to become a visceral sort of knowledge. Okay, let me know if you have questions and have fun. You're well on your way to like learning some really good programming stuff.